Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this edition of Conversation with a Shipmate. I am MC2 Lori Benz alongside Lieutenant Bashan Mann and we are here today with the Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Jonathan Greenert and Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy Mike Stevens. Good afternoon gentlemen and thank you for joining us here in the nation's capital. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. As you both have stated in the last week, many sailors are continuing to do good things and that you don't believe that we have an ethics problem in the Navy. As ethics will continue to be discussed in the media and amongst our shipmates, what now is the focus on? Well, I, a small correction. I do believe we have an ethics problem, but I don't think we have an epidemic uh, or a wave or that we're reeling uh, or that we're out of control with regard to ethical behavior or the behavior of our sailors. You hit the nail on the head. There are hundreds of thousands of sailors and civilians who are doing a magnificent job out there in the Navy, and our statistics show it. And what I mean by that is we track conduct, behavior, uh, we track ethical uh, accusations, if you will, and those that are under investigation. And all of those facts and figures show that, that in fact, conduct is a little better than it has been over the last five years. But the point is, you've, you've hit the nail on the head again on that it is out there in the public. And we have to be sure that the public understands that we take integrity and ethical behavior and our character very seriously. We owe that to the public. And so that's what I'm talking about. It's kind of, hey, everybody, remember who we are and what our foundation is, everybody. And integrity underwrites it all. Mid yeah, you know, integrity is a, uh, a core fundamental aspect of our core values of honor, courage, and commitment. Whenever a sailor, any sailor, violates our core values, uh, then you could say, we could say, we have a problem. Uh, and then that problem needs to be addressed. And that's what we're doing right now. We're addressing the problem. And, you know, I completely agree with CNO uh, that I don't see this as a uh, a systemic uh, issue across the Navy. I speak for the Navy, uh, but we do have a problem, and we need to, and we need to get after it. So, you know, your vantage point from where you sit is completely different from my vantage point, or even Lieutenant Mann. Explain to us where you think we stand with ethic violations. Well, we have a few people uh, who have made some poor choices, uh, and so it's high visibility. Cheating uh, in the nuclear power enterprise, uh, that's an issue, all right? And Admiral Richardson was very clear whenever he and I spoke uh, to the press on where he stood on that, and he's taking action accordingly. We've had these issues before uh, in the nuclear power enterprise, and I'm sure that uh, he knows exactly what he's doing in that regard. We are looking into the nuclear weapons enterprise. Uh, to th We have no accusations in that regard, but there have been some across the Department uh, of Defense. And we want to be sure that our folks, again, understand integrity, performance, uh, telling the truth, uh, never lying, cheating, or stealing, that it underwrites all that, that we do. So my vantage point is we've got to be sure, as Mick Pond said, that everyone out there Let's stop here and take a deep breath. Remember what we are about and, and what underwrites, again, I keep saying that, and the foundation of all that we do. Imagine any doubt going into the, a Hornet pilot who's sitting there getting ready to go from zero to 165 miles an hour that somebody out there is going to say exactly the truth of what is going on. Imagine somebody wondering before we dive the submerge the submarine if the rig for dive is completely done and that everybody has done exactly what they want to do. Imagine the public even wondering if a pre-critical checkoff on a nuclear propulsion plant, a nuclear reactor, that there would be any doubt that everybody tells exactly the truth. And lastly, imagine somebody putting on a parachute <laughs> and wondering if the parachutist put this thing together right and when they signed their name. There would be any doubt as to their integrity. See, and I, we're going to get into that, that trust um, factor in, in a little bit, but I want to go back to this conversation that we want to keep, uh, keep on going, that we want to move forward, uh, and we want to have that across both um, you know, enlisted and, and, and the officer ranks. Mm -hmm. uh, the behavior we're seeing is, is crossing uh, both sides as well. Um, however, there's going to be folks that are watching this right now and may seem reluctant 
to talk about it. Um, how would you offer uh, that they do that? That, that you know, how do we promote this conversation to happen out there in the fleet? Well, generally, it, it would begin with a a, a, jun a senior, you know, confronting the junior, saying, "Well, let's have a conversation about it." But any junior sailor, if they are wondering about a, a tough decision, uh, they should ask. Ask the chief. Uh, JOs, you should ask your captain. Captains should be talking, having these conversations on the bridge. These, uh, you know, there's right and wrong, and that a lot of that is just right up front. Always tell the truth. Never lie, cheat, or steal. But sometimes ethical decisions can be tough. So when we got together the last time, we, we talked about books. I have another one for you. I read this book many, many years ago, and it was called How Good People Make Tough Choices, all right? Living Ethically. And it's a great book. You know, you'll find it out there online. It's a thin book, so it's worthy of a read. And it's cases of, of how to think your way through in cases of ethical violations, and, and people are going to be tempted. Uh, so we've got to have these conversations. It's part of leadership training. McPont, what advice do you have for that sailor who is faced with challenging an unethical situation? Yeah, that's a, a good question and, and can be a tough one. Uh, I would like to start by saying two things. One is we have to recognize, all of us, that it cannot be ignored. That when you've identified an issue uh, involving ethics, specifically what we're talking about right now is integrity, uh, you must take action. You, you cannot turn a blind eye. But I also recognize this from personal experience, is that it's not always easy. As a matter of fact, most of the time it's not easy to address it because oftentimes it involves a friend, uh, a close shipmate of yours. Uh, it can involve a, a senior leader. Uh, and so how you address that, how you formulate a plan of action can be very important for you in order for you to address it correctly. So I would offer this advice. If you see something and you know that it needs to be addressed and it's not a safety issue, it's not something that needs to be handled right now, this very moment in time, because some things we need to handle right now. But if it's something that you can talk to a trusted advisor, a mentor, a supervisor, a friend, might even be a family member. Uh, I know I talk to Teresa about things all the time. Uh, she is one of my most trusted advisors. Uh, I would say take that opportunity, have that conversation, think about how you want to address it because sometimes you only get one chance to do it uh, and you want to get it as right as you possibly can that first time. Uh, so that would be my advice to uh, our shipmates out there because I'm sure as we sit here and have this conversation, there are sailors out there right now that are listening to us talk and they're thinking to themselves, you know what, I know of something, uh, but I just don't know how to address it. So to those shipmates, have a conversation with someone you trust, figure out how you want to address it, but most importantly, don't ignore it. We can't ignore it. So, you know, just based on what the McPond just said, what would you then say to a, a department head or a CO um, in, in terms of having that conversation? Uh, McPond just gave the sound advice. I mean, we are all people. I mean, you can put stuff on our collar devices and you can give us rank and you can give us you know, uh, positions, but in the end, we're all humans and we are prone to make mistakes. We have anxieties and we have doubts. You have to sit down and talk it through. <laughs> My advisor is Darlene, my wife is, he's got Teresa, and anybody that's married and has a head on their shoulders would know that's what you do. You talk to your spouse about those things in life. I mean, they're your soulmates. Similarly, uh, department heads and CEOs, you, you, gotta, you gotta talk it through. You gotta have mentors, and that's what they're for. Find the mentor, or if you're somebody that should be a mentor, find the person that mentor, and then, as, as the McPond said, have the conversation, ethical decisions, can be difficult. You know, it's not always, you know, truth or false, true or false, or, you know, or truth or lie, but, but those things, we've talked about those. Uh, and that's okay, you know, have that conversation. It's okay to have that doubt. So, you know, you, you touched on early, uh, earlier about the, the public, and, and what I, what I want to ask you is, uh, across the services, uh, as more allegations come out of um, you know, unethical behavior, uh, you can run into this uh, sort of the peril of a tarnished reputation. Yes. Um, does the Navy, or do you see the Navy as having uh, an issue uh, in the public right now? 
We might. I don't know, and I don't detect it at this point. But what is of concern to me is that we don't, and that if people are wondering, that we assure them that uh, they shouldn't worry about that. We assure them that, once again, integrity is the foundation of what we're about. We won't uh, tolerate a loss of integrity. We will hold those responsible, accountable. We take it very seriously and watch our actions, watch what we'll do. Ask us, so what are you doing about it? And see to it that it is in the fiber in our existence. It's our ethos. We raise our right hand and take the oath. We talked about that the last time we got together and the importance of that. Uh, and that's how we got here in the, if you will, the good graces of the public. I think we all understand that the public holds us in fairly high regard. Those of us that serve, wear the cloth of the nation, hey, there's responsibility in that and we'll stand up to it because that's what we're about. McPon, do you think this is affecting the sailors, the ones who are doing the right thing? You know, I know a lot of, of what I know is a lot of what you know and that's what we read, right? And if one was to just solely believe everything that you read in social media and other mediums that uh, we communicate by, uh, you could come to the conclusion uh, that the public thinks that we have a problem. But I agree with the CNO. Uh, that hasn't necessarily been what the public has been communicating back to us. I don't believe it's trust that's been lost. And I don't believe our sailors feel that that trust has been lost. Uh, I believe that our sailors uh, who interact with friends and family and, and people that they know in the public uh, understand that people still trust them, will continue to trust them, but they also understand that trust can be a fragile thing and that we all need to continue to work hard to maintain that trust. Mm -hmm. Can I get to, uh, Vashon, you asked me a question, uh, just same question, what, is, what, is the peop uh, what does the public feel? And, how do our sailors feel about that? Uh, I think it's incumbent upon us, and I will take this for action, to show our sailors what are the facts. In other words, uh, how many courts marshals do we have? How many masks do we have? Do we have a lot of people being put on report? Are DUIs up? Alcohol-related incidents? It goes on and on. The statistics will show that no, they are not rising. And in fact, most are creeping down. We've been at this, I think all of you know, for a while, but that's only part of the issue here, you know, the facts being what they are, what's the perception, and what do our people believe, the, you know, our sailors and our families and our civilians. You know, our, our sailors know that um, uh, we have a problem and we're addressing it, but I don't believe that they should let this in any way define them and who they are. Uh, we trust our sailors. Uh, we believe that the vast, vast majority of them are doing the right thing every single day, and we will we will get through this. We will work hard together and we will tackle this issue. So Stano, do you believe that the media or the perception of the public is creating a certain culture within the, within the Navy as having that ethical failure or having that culture of, of allowing these problems to continue? No, I don't. I, I don't. Uh, culture to me uh, means uh, it, it is a uh, action or behavior that is, goes throughout an, an organization or an institution. So I don't think we see that at all. I would certainly hope that uh, we're interesting. I mean, the fact that that's the fact of the matter. Um, we would be all of us. And again, if, when you have a public that holds anything in high regard, they watch it, they expect things from it. If it has uh, issues or occasional failures, that is newsworthy, and we are seeing that. Uh, on the other hand, now it will watch it and expect it, that would be us, to respond to that. And that's what we're talking about here today. But I, I would hope that there's not sweeping through, and I do not detect this, of the ranks of sailors out there, uh, a feeling of I'm hanging my head because I'm in an organization that has a sweeping and a reeling, and you pick your words, uh, epidemic of ethical failures. That's just not the case. I don't believe it, but perhaps more importantly, the statistics do not show it. And if I may chime in, Mick, let me, let me ask you, if, if you have a sailor out there that's, that's sitting there and he's saying, uh, come on, you know, I know what really goes on here. 
and uh, I'm not going to be a rat, right? You know, that's what they call it where I come from, where I grew up. I don't want to be a rat uh, and, and rat out some, some bad snitch. behavior that's, that's going on, <laughs> snitch or, or a rat. Right, exactly. Yeah, that so, so what do you say to that sailor? You know, that's reality. Um, I can appreciate a sailor who's thinking that because I've thought the same thing before. But as I stated earlier, um, this goes to who we are as sailors. This goes to trust. This is in our DNA. Uh, we cannot ignore those sorts of things. We have a duty, a sworn duty, and a responsibility uh, to address it. Now, let me say that not every ethical violation requires us to run it up the flagpole, the chain of command. Sometimes there's something going on that you can just have a conversation with your friend, with your shipmate, yeah. and say, hey, um, you know, maybe you, maybe we should rethink this. Uh, this probably isn't the right way to do it, or this is something that we shouldn't allow ourselves to get caught up in. I think when we talk about this sometimes, we instantly think that this is a subject that reaches the highest levels of attention or, or discipline uh, because what's really brought this to the forefront is something that's pretty serious. But sometimes it's, I don't want to use the word minor because ethical behavior is always serious, but it can be handled sometimes with a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I would say that uh, that's probably the best approach that you can take, uh, if at all possible. So you're not ratting your buddy out, you're not you know, throwing them under the bus, so to speak, you're uh, actually helping them get away from this type of behavior, this type of conduct, and to allow them to be successful. You know, the issue down in uh, Charleston, the, the cheating on examinations, uh, a sailor was offered an opportunity to use an examination that uh, was you know, violated, if you will, uh, and chose not to. Made that decision simply, no, I, I don't, first of all, he didn't need it. Uh, they weren't under that much anxiety and chose not to do it. So, I mean, that stopped what, what had been, you know, um, an, an ongoing issue. And so there, it doesn't all involve, as the McPond said, uh, snitching on anybody or turning anybody in. And again, we all have anxieties and hesitations about it. But uh, I think, as, as the McPond said, most all of these can be handled at lower levels. And that's the, that tends to be the beauty of our military culture. You can handle things in a chain of command that can be dealt with. And the sooner, the better. And the sooner, the less egregious the, the issue becomes. It's a slippery slope when we go down and, and deceive. There's, there's a lot of cliches. We won't go through them all. <laughs> Tangled web, you know, et cetera. We, uh, but I think we all agree, if you can get it done at a lower level, do it. And everybody feels better. Mm -hmm. And it goes away. I know the last time we were here, we spoke about leadership. How does leadership play into creating an environment where ethics, morality, integrity is key to the success of a command? Well, uh, leadership has to be approachable to do, to have such a conversation. Uh, the McPond alluded to it before. Uh, understand that everybody has anxieties. We are humans. And leaders should expect, anticipate mistakes. And I underline mistakes. And that's fine. People who mean well uh, and make mistakes, uh, that's OK. You, you come forward and, and describe that and have that conversation. So leadership has to be open to that, to that self-correction. And we can do that. Siano, you spoke with a shipmate in Guam recently. Mm -hmm. And that episode can be found at Navy.mil. You mentioned wonder of trust. Tell us. How significant is trust amongst shipmates, and how does this affect a mission? Well, uh, I just uh, tr try and imagine you get everybody gets on a, a steel vessel and goes out to sea. If they don't all trust one another, you're going to drown. I mean, when you think about it, the, you're going to starve. <laughs> you're going to run out of fuel. Then you'll eventually starve, and then eventually you're all going to drown, one way or the other. So as crazy as that sounds, there is an element that's absolutely uh, full of trust right there. But we fly airplanes. We all get together and go up in an airplane. You absolutely have to trust the pilots, and they have to trust everybody in the air crew. Submerge a submarine. I mentioned just earlier a tactical aircraft. Any aircraft taking off an aircraft carrier, that's probably the classic example, you know, of the shooter waving his fingers going around looking for that thumbs up or not 
stopping as soon as it's there because you believe and you understand. And sometimes, I know, you say, I'm not sure. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, so that's the, that's the essence of what we're about, ultimate trust in each other. And uh, again, not too much drama, but it is uh, all about survivability and, and lives are at stake. So if we lose that trust, if we don't have that integrity, I, I get concerned that you get on a slope. You say, oh, come on, CNO, we're talking small stuff here, a little lie. I say, yeah, okay, but where does that stop? And are you sure? Because once you get, we all know that, once you get it embedded in you and you say, well, I got away with that one, and then when, when does it stop? Or how can you be so smart to know that whatever that log was that you made didn't check that gauge? was not the one that makes the difference. I honestly don't know, and I've been in the Navy a long time, you know? So that's, that's the underlying piece for me. Mick Pond, uh, you, you're well-traveled, you're well-respected in this Navy. Uh, I think if you're, you're out on that aircraft carrier and you ask that, that airman uh, about that F-18, uh, he or she will explain, oh, well, it's my plane, All right? So how far does that trust go? Just, just sort of using that, that adage. Well, it just, yeah, just so happens, you know, CNO and I have spent the better part of our careers uh, in a profession like many, as a matter of fact, like most of our sailors, that it's inherently dangerous, where we have to have uh, the absolute trust in the people that we're around. You know, I was a helicopter crew chief for a long time, and every time we got in that aircraft and went flying, uh, we had to have uh, absolute, complete, unquestioned trust in the work that our sailors did on that aircraft and in the pilots that were flying that aircraft. Because one mistake uh, could possibly mean that you weren't coming home. Uh, so it wasn't, to me, something you just talked about. It was something that you lived. It was something that was a part of everything you did every single day. And we have sailors out there in a, you know, a variety of fields uh, that place that same trust uh, in the people that they're around every single day. And so as the CNO said, it's, it's, it's who we are. It's part of our core. Without trust, one could argue we don't exist as a Navy. Uh, you said something about leadership. With your permission, can I come back and talk about something about leaders? Absolutely. Thank you. Pre appreciate that, Pedro Mr. Ben. Um, one thing that I talk with our sailors about, in particular my chief's mess, uh, in my zeroing in on excellence initiative uh, under good order and discipline, for leaders, uh, if you want your sailor, our sailors, to do the right thing, uh, then we have to do the right thing. Because in many respects, a sailor will become who you are. And so if you want integrity to be a part of their culture, a part of who they are, then it has to be a part of who you are. So more than what we say often, it's what we do. And so our sailors are watching us, all pay grades. Our sailors are watching us, they're watching what we do. Uh, and they will emulate us in many ways. So I say to our sailors out there and to my chiefs in particular, if we want them to do the right thing, then do the right thing and they will become it. Is that a challenge that you face your chiefs whenever you speak with them? You know, I wouldn't say it's a challenge to them. This is something that they know. This is something they remind me of and this is something that I remind them of uh, because this is a, a collaborative effort. Uh, I simply don't have uh, the monopoly on integrity, uh, nor does anyone. Uh, so it's a constant conversation and a dialogue, and so we go back and forth with this, and it's important that we remind one another. So we do understand that this conversation does not end here. It is a conversation that is going to continue every day, and our sailors are going to be faced with situations that they are not sure how to deal with. And as leaders out there, the chiefs, the officers, they as you said, Sienna, they have to be prepared to yeah. deal with certain mistakes or certain challenges that a sailor might bring to them. Is there anything else, any advice you want to give our sailors to help them understand how important it is to trust each other and to have that integrity to step up, have that honor and courage and commitment to say something when they do see something wrong? Well, I, I would say um, I don't think anybody knows uh, when their challenge to, if you will, tell the truth, the absolute, 
make that uh, decision to uh, express a doubt or say, let me, let me uh, sir, I need to talk to you about this, and then get it right, that w they will know that that isn't, if you will, a, a life-changing or life-saving event. I just say we don't have that choice and we can't pick and choose. It gets to that slippery slope. Uh, so uh, embrace it as part of your life because it goes beyond the Navy, but certainly in your time in the Navy, the, uh, learn to trust uh, your shipmate, and that's the definition of shipmate now, isn't it? Uh, somebody that you absolutely trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, if this uh, subject was easy, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Uh, it's been a challenge uh, for mankind since our existence, uh, but it's important, and that's why it's important that we always talk about it, and we maintain an open and robust dialogue, and that we lead by example. You know, what I'd like to, our sailors to know is that through my career, I have and I continue to trust them. I trust them with my life. It wasn't that long ago that CNO and I flew out to one of our ships for Thanksgiving. And, yeah, I remember that. You know, we caught the wire and we took a catch shot and, you know, we probably wouldn't have got on that plane if there was doubt. Uh, but we have, I have uh, the trust in our sailors to, to do those sorts of things and I will continue to do those sorts of things. So to them, I want them to know that I trust them and also to understand this. This is something that they own, that they control, that they make the decision. No one can tell you to have integrity or not to have integrity. You make that decision. We can remind sailors the importance of integrity and the role that it plays and the trust that we have in them and how we function as a Navy. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks for doing that. He's right. Nobody can take your integrity away. You give it up. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for talking with us and giving us a deeper understanding of what is expected. I mean, if there was any doubt in the fleet on what the expectation was on ethical character, I mean, there should be no question at this point, you know, honor, courage, commitment, being leaders, guiding, trusting each other to do the right thing. And I know sailors are going to be talking about this even more because now we understand it more and i thank you lieutenant oh, for I'm joining me here I'm today glad to be part of it. thank you so we can talk so we needed to talk about what is yeah. being said what is being written about our navy i call it my navy too even though i'm just a baby in the navy it's still my navy and i shouldn't have to wonder if i can trust my leaders or my shipmates thank you so much you're welcome. It's, glad, you. it's great to be here. And this is just the start. We'll, we have more to talk about. It is a long journey uh, on this, and we'll have to continue to work it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you, CNO. Thank you, McPon, for being here today. And thank you, Lieutenant, for joining us. Thank you. And we want to thank you for joining us for another edition of Conversation with a Shipmate. Be sure to log on and watch the entire series on the CNO's leadership page at Navy.mil and follow this conversation on Twitter at hashtag CNO Greenert. Thanks for tuning in. I'm MC2 Lori Bent. We'll see you next time for Conversation with a Shipmate.